Back in Portland, Oregon, getting set for our second game of the day. It's the 1-9 matchup in the West region between Gonzaga and Memphis. A look at the bracket in the West, and the winner of this one will see either New Mexico State or Arkansas in the Sweet 16. And hi again, everyone, with former Villanova head coach Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Andy Katz coming up. This building is buzzing right now, and on paper, we got a great matchup. Well, there's no doubt. This Memphis team has a great front court, but Gonzaga, probably the best front court in the country with Timmy and Holmgren. I'm interested to see how Memphis is going to deal with that. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Wendy's. And for Gonzaga, Drew Timmy coming off a 32-point game in the first round against Georgia State. And for Memphis, Alex. Alex Lomax does start. He injured his left ankle on Thursday. For more on that, here's Andy Katz. All right, thank you, Andrew. I spoke with Alex Lomax during warm-ups. He told me he's good to go. An invaluable piece of the Memphis Tigers. Remember, Penny Hardaway has coached him since Lomax was in the sixth grade. Nine points, five boards, five assists in that win the other night. Hardaway calls him the heart and soul of the Tigers. And there is Penny in his fourth season taking Memphis to the tournament for the first time since 2014. And for Gonzaga, Mark Few, 23rd season with the Bulldogs. And this is going to sound like a home game for Gonzaga. Spokane is about a five and a half hour drive away, and a lot of fans have made the trip. But when you're on the overall number one seed, isn't that supposed to be part of stuff that goes yes. with it? It certainly, it certainly is <laughs> here in Portland. We got projected NBA lottery picks going head to head to jump it up. Jalen Duran and Chet Holmgren. Yeah, these two young kids. Wow. Two of the best freshmen in the country. Holmgren a little more advanced, but Duran only 18 years old. He can catch up. And Duran wins the tip. Memphis with the first possession. And they're ninth. Gonzaga is a 99.9% man-to-man team. That's what they'll do. Memphis on the other hand, they may throw a little bit of zone in this game. Here's Duran inside. Around Holmgren, it won't go, and Holmgren with the rebound. Those are the kind of things he's got to finish in this game, and he's capable of it. Timmy, they couldn't get it to him. Holmgren's pass is picked off by Williams. They went to the high-low right away. Timmy scored 32 against Georgia State. They went to him, but that was good pressure by DeAndre Williams on Holmgren's pass. Duran again, spinning on Holmgren, and Holmgren with the block. And then out of bounds, it'll stay with Memphis. Well, Holmgren, I mean, he's one of the best shot blockers, number four in the country, so it's not going to be so easy for Duran to just take him like that. Got a shot fake and maybe get him off his feet and draw a foul. 112th block of the year for Holmgren. Duran working on him again. Duran, no, the tip is there for Duran. Duran is one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. This is a kid who had 21 and 20 in the quarterfinals of the American Athletic Conference. Very, very capable on the glass. And certainly one of the big keys tonight for Memphis, Penny Hardaway telling us, keeping Duran out of foul trouble. And that's why I think they may use a little bit of zone, not yet, but they may go to it at some point. Nemhart fakes the three. Holmgren drives on Duran, and there's the foul. That's a foul you can't pick up. If you're going to pick up a foul, you got to pick it up in the post. You can't pick it up getting beat off the dribble by a guy 7-1. Now, no, he, he doesn't have to get up on him that close. So just over a minute in, and the freshman Duran with one foul. I know it's easy to say I would take him out, because if he gets his second, now you got a real problem. Strother three, won't go, and the long rebound. Lomax is able to corral it. DeAndre Williams will launch a three. It won't go. He's made only nine threes this season. Bolton for three, it's good. This kid has shot lights out all year. 46% from the three-point line. They fell asleep that time, Gonzaga. And Nolly is fouled going to the hoop. He'll shoot two. 
Well, this has all the makings to be a track meet with yeah, the way these two teams like to play. These are two teams amongst the top 20 in the country in Temple, according to Ken Pomeroy. This, this is just a great shot in transition. But Memphis comes right back the other way. It's Gonzaga fall. Gonzaga's not used to playing against a team like this that wants to run as much as they do. Nolly 79% at the free throw line. You can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. If I'm Gonzaga, I'm going at Jalen during this possession. Some pressure here by the Tigers. And this is what they do. They're one of the top teams in the country in forcing turnovers. Their problem is they average 16 turnovers a game. They force nearly 15. Nemhard, 11 assists the other day. Holmgren thought about a three, dribbles in on Duran. Turnaround is pure. See, this kid is not a five man. He can play out on the perimeter. That's what makes him a 7 1 and a 7 5 wingspan. So tough. He can handle the ball, he can shoot it. He's a real talent. Williams working on Timmy. Out to Lomax. They're not worried about Lomax's shot. And that two won't go, but an offensive rebound. Duran had it poked away, and he regains possession. Duran and Holmgren battling. Duran has 55 pounds on Chet Holmgren. Duran down low, rejected again by Holmgren, and Holmgren takes it away. You know, Jalen Duran has not played against anybody like Chet Holmgren. Nemar kisses a three. Best transition team in the country. Memphis beat Boise State on Thursday, 64 to 53. They were up 38-19 at the half. Williams, nice move and could not finish. It goes out of bounds to Gonzaga. And you know why he couldn't finish? Because Holmgren was there. Even though he should have finished that one, that bothered him that he was there. Holmgren fourth in the country in block shots per game this season. He has nine blocks in the first game in four minutes. Well, how about his line the other day? 19 points, 17 rebounds, seven blocks, five assists, no turnovers. First player in tournament history to have those numbers since blocks became an official stat in 1986. Emhard cannot make this three, and now numbers the other way from Memphis. Quinones over to Nolly, pops a three, and the rebound to Strother. I, I, think, I thought they could have had a three on one break there and take a layup. Holmgren for three. And that has not been a good part of his game lately. He's won for his last 12 as Nolly knocks that one out of bounds and takes us to our first timeout. Do not blink in this game. Up and down we go. And Gonzaga out to an early four-point lead. And now AT&T 5G takes us above the rim for one of the best plays of the game. It's the block shots by Gonzaga. They have two of them already in this game. Memphis starting out one for nine. The big reason is because of the intimidation by that man in that lane. Both blocks for Chet Holmgren, who gets a breather, and Duran on the bench as well for Memphis. And Imani Bates is at the scorer's table set to check in for the Tigers. And this Memphis team is a very capable defensive team. Shot clock violation. Boy, Mark Fuse frustrated over that. I don't blame him. The question for Memphis is, they are not a great half-court team. So how are they going to score in the half-court? That's been their issue all year. But when they get out in transition and their defense gets them going, they can beat anybody. Penny Hardaway played 12 different players on Thursday. Ten of them scored, and a couple of early substitutions here with Harris and Dandridge on the floor. The thing that hurts them a little bit is these guards are small. Lomax and Harris are small guards. Shot clock at five. Williams backs it out. Now he's going with one. 
I don't think he got it off in time. It doesn't matter. He missed it anyway. Memphis without a field goal in the last four minutes. Nemhart through traffic. Nice move. Puts it up, and it won't go. They got to run. When they get a rebound, they got to go. Now, they are playing against a team that's used to running all the time. Harris travels. First turnover by the Tigers, who are one for ten from the floor. So, Penny Hardaway is going to turn to Imani Bates. He did not play the final 12 games of this season. Returned for the first time on Thursday. Played three and a half minutes and hit a three-pointer. Let's check in with Andy Katz. And Penny Hardaway told us yesterday he's on a minutes restriction because of that back injury. So you're looking at a max of 10 to 15 if he can play that many tonight. And Penny thought that just getting a taste on Thursday was good for the confidence of Bates. Timmy. Double teamed inside, turn around, won't go. And there's the rebound for Williams. You know, it, let's face it, you start out one for ten in a game and you're down four. It's their defense that's been good. And, and that's the guy, Quinones, is the most consistent of the three-point shooters on Memphis. His first field goal of the day. Quinones had eight points against Boise State. Bolton cannot answer. And it goes out of bounds. To the Bulldogs. Oh, now they've changed it. It'll be Memphis Balls. We take a look at our tournament summary. The top four seeds are 18 and 3. Saw UNC beat Baylor in overtime earlier today, and there's some blue bloods already in the Sweet 16. Memphis and Gonzaga trying to join those who have already advanced. Yeah, that East bracket has been blown up. <laughs> Baylor out, Kentucky out. We saw UCLA advance to the Sweet 16 a short time ago here in Portland. Durham feeds Dandridge. Dandridge the finish. That's a great high low from Durham to Dandridge. Usually it's the other way around, but that was a really good play. Gonzaga scoreless in close to three and a half minutes. We've already had four lead changes in the first half. Him hard for three. His second. Last year, a 32% three point shooter. This year, at 37%. That's got to be a foul on Timmy. Durin, tough shot is short. Quinones, the offensive board, put back in the foul. I mean, I just feel like these post ups are bumped. Bump, bump, and you're supposed to call the first bump in the post. Good job by Quinones. Hey, one thing about Memphis, they steal the ball and they offensive rebound as good as anybody in the country. It's funny thing is, defensively, they're 288 defensive rebounding, but they get on the offensive glass as good as anybody in the country. They already have four offensive rebounds in the first seven minutes. Bolton knocked away by Dandridge, but Bolton recovers. Watson for three. You know, it's always a good sign, I think, for a team if, if Gonzaga's not getting the ball inside. Quinones, turn around. No. Nemhard all the way, and the foul. Nemhard has come to play. Well, Nemhard just goes full speed ahead. And when he's got you backpedaling like that, you better be in a stance, which Quinones is not in a stance there, and he is gone. In the post-game press conference on Thursday, it was Nemhard, Timmy, and Holmgren. And everyone was asking questions to Timmy and Holmgren. They combined for 51 points. And both Timmy and Holmgren said, hey, Andrew Nemhard does not get enough credit. He had 11 assists in that game. And even though he doesn't put up the big point totals of the other two, he's just as important to this Gonzaga team. Like most great teams, he's a piece that does what he's supposed to do. Why not? Dishes to Dandridge. He locates Bates. Corner three on the way. No good. How about the follow? Why not? From the Rafters for two. Now you see why he was all rookie in the American Athletic Conference, only playing 16 minutes a game. Timmy working on Duran. 
Good defense by Duran. Watson has it trapped on the baseline. Nifty pass to Nemhar. What defense by Minot there. No, they're going to see a whole different level of athleticism against these guys. Not this time for Nemhard and Dandridge the board. Minot races up ahead. Duran's there. Minot out to Bates. Another three ball. He's 0 for 2. Minot offensive rebound and a foul is called. That's going to go on Rajir Bolton, and it takes us to a timeout. This is a high level game, folks. Tied at 13 in Oregon. Welcome back to Portland, Mark. What do you have to do to change the flow offensively in your favor? I mean, we're doing fine on offense. We're getting great shots. Uh, we're moving the ball well. We took good care of it, so we're fine. What about defensively? All right, we got to definitely work harder on keeping them off the glass. They're just an exceptional uh, rebounding team. Thanks, Mark. Well, this team here is number five in offensive rebounding percentage in the country, Memphis. Gonzaga's number five in rebound margin. They out-rebound their opponents by eight a game. 14-10 right now on the glass for Memphis. Gonzaga's going to have to do a better job of boxing out these guys on the glass. That was a big concern when we met with Mark Few yesterday, fighting for rebounds. Bates trying to work on Bolton out to Nolly. Strother trips. Nolly cannot take advantage. Fighting for it. And a tie-up. It'll go over to Gonzaga. You can get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. And Andrew, the other thing is, Timmy and Holger have two points between them. After nine minutes of the game, the other day they had 51 for the game. Yeah, and Nemhard has really been the offense out of bounds. Nemhard three for six. The rest of the Zags are a combined two for eight. Holmgren back on the floor for Gonzaga. That left ankle appears to be okay for Lomax, and we have a foul. And that's going to go on Malcolm Dandridge. His first. Holmgren and Duran have met before in AAU the summer before their junior year. And you got two of the projected NBA lottery picks going head to head tonight. Strother inside. Nice fake and he scores. Gonzaga started three for four since then. They're three for 11. Yeah, they'd like to get him going. He only had one basket there. They'll just allow. Oh, and during the finish off the feed from Lomax. That was one of those. Just throw it up there. That kid will go get it. 6'11, 250 is Jalen Duran. Strother cuts and scores. Everyone had their back turned to the ball on Memphis. That's what happens when you want to put pressure all the time. Quickly the other way is Williams over Holmgren, and he banks it in. Look at this end to end action. Nemhart races up. Gets it over to Hickman. They did a good job getting back that time, Memphis, because they were pushing it on them. Lomax, good defense. Strother recovers. Quinones at the scores table for the Tigers, and a foul is called. How about You're the dunk? See Lomax on the penetration. Watson gets caught up a little too high, but. <laughs> If you don't put a body on Doran anyway, he's catching that and doing what he needs to do. And then on the back cut there, nobody sees it from the weak side. And Strother makes the layup. Foul is on Nolly. Memphis with four here in the first half. I'll tell you, this Memphis team, Andrew, is quick. Quick. Strother from the outside won't go tip to Nolly. They've got Gonzaga off their game. They have it high load like they normally do on the offensive end. Good defensive play by Anton Watson. Holmgren running the floor. Trying to get it to Nemhard. He can't. And now Hickman. 
They had Lomax on Holmgren. That uh, wasn't going to work. This is the matchup here as Holmgren backs it out with Duran defending him. Just got to stay on his feet, Duran. Shot clock at three. Hickman bounces it to Holmgren. Poked away by Williams and a shot clock violation. And Memphis not happy because they were running the break. You know, the, the uh, Gonzaga time of possession for each offensive possession, number one fastest in the country, and they got a shot clock violation there. I think that speaks to the kind of defense Memphis is capable of playing. That's a great point. They average 14 and a half seconds per possession, which is the fastest in the nation. But a shot clock violation thanks to Penny Hardaway's defense. Memphis heating up on the offensive end as well. They started one for 10. Since then, they're six for their last 11. Yeah, because if they get stops and they go in transition, then they can play with anybody. Lomax didn't know where to go when he went up in the air, and he turns it over. Yeah, he wanted to shoot it, and then Duran turned his back. He was hoping that he would see it and pick up the loose ball. How about Gonzaga? Drew Timmy is still scoreless with 8.20 to go. He hasn't got a touch. He's 0 for 2. They got Quinones on him now, but look at the pressure on Holmgren. On that. They tried to high low. Nemhard T3, and he's already in double figures with 11 points. Eight minutes to go in what's been a very entertaining first half. Williams left alone. Can't hit the three, oh, and Duran goes over the back. That's his second foul. Great box out by Drew Timmy. Jalen Duran's got to come out now. 7.47 to go. Duran picks up his second. Gonzaga leads by three. Welcome back to Portland, Penny. Now that Jalen Duran has picked up his second foul, how are you going to manage that the rest of the first half? Well, we got we got Malcolm Dandridge coming in. We feel very confident in him and a veteran that he can, he can, he can handle the job. Thanks, Penny. Thank you. So Duran to the bench with two fouls. What a game so far. Nobody is led by more than four points. And you know, one little stat here is Gonzaga's taken 11 three-point shots and only four shots at the rim. I think that speaks to the interior defensive ability of this Memphis team. And Timmy remains scoreless. He had 32 on Thursday. And Penny's right. You know, Malcolm Danridge, he only plays 11 minutes a game, but he's 6'10", he's big, he's strong, and he's a veteran. Hickman step back is good. You know, Tyler Harris is small. He's 5'9", and these guards from Gonzaga are much bigger. That was all a size shot right there. Williams drops in. Oh, hello, DeAndre Williams. I mean, Gonzaga's defense there was seriously lacking. Big time jam, and Memphis back within three. Strother, too strong off the glass, and Dandridge clears. Harris, dangerous three-point shooter. That one won't go. Williams goes up high. Offensive rebound and the putback. Already seven offensive rebounds for Memphis. I mean, the way this team goes to the glass, they've got eight points on the offensive glass to zero for Gonzaga. There's Dandridge. Penny Hardaway telling Andy Katz a lot of confidence and a carry by Holmgren. And that was because of the pressure that Malcolm Dandridge was putting on Holmgren there. He caused that turnover. And now thrilling drives presented by Nissan. How about that one? And Chet Holmgren got caught on the other side of Dandridge. It was kind of like he Dandridge blocked him out, and that's how he got in there for that dunk all by himself. Timmy and Holmgren have two. Combined points. I think the bigger story is they've taken three shots. Four shots. 0 for 2 and 1 for 2. Nolly, nice find and Dandridge! And the one. finish with the foul! Oh, these Tigers came to play! Well, look at this. We got a great drive by Nolly. Two guys come to help. 
Nobody rotates inside of Dandridge right there. Rajir Bolton is standing there, number 45, doesn't rotate on the inside, and they give it to him, and he dunks it. Four dunks already in the first half for Memphis. And Dandridge cannot complete the three-point play. Here's Timmy. And before the shot, a foul is called. That's on DeAndre Williams. And that'll be his first. Mark Few's team has only lost three games all year. Duke, Alabama, and at St. Mary's. Strother, catch and shoot. Timmy could not get the offensive rebound, but Bolton, he'll fire a three. No good. Timmy had it, and he's fouled. And that's the seventh team foul against Memphis. Well, it's part cooking competition, part who done it. Six cooks compete. One cook tries to secretly ruin everyone's dish. Rat in the kitchen, a new competition series, March 31st on TBS. Memphis was very lucky. They made a couple of mistakes. They left Strawler completely alone from the corner for a three that he doesn't make. And then they out of rebounding position. So Drew Timmy to the line looking for his first point of the night. Nolly committed the foul. He comes out and Minot back on the floor. Gonzaga has already attempted 13 three pointers. I mean, they like to shoot threes. They make about eight and a half a game, but their bread and butter is those two bigs. And they have only run one high low the entire game. And that's because Memphis is denying that high post so hard. They can't get the ball there. Timmy, one out of two, and the rebound to Williams. Tied at 23. You better get back on these guys. Timberlake Timberlake is fouled. The transition right now, I mean, on a made foul shot, Memphis runs that thing down the floor. Gonzaga not in defensive position or defensive stance, and Dandridge make, makes him pay for it. I mean, uh, Timberlake. They are deep. They play a lot of guys, and they are deep. That doesn't go for Timberlake, who's just 58%. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, the best Coke ever, as in best of all time, to bait the goatness. Timberlake, one out of two. Let's check in with Andy Katz. You know, it's interesting, Lap, because Penny said to us yesterday, he didn't want to play a lot of guys against a team like Gonzaga, but I think Jalen Duren's foul trouble has forced that. No question, Andy, and that's exactly what he said. I thought when he came in with Imbani Bates so early, I said, well, I guess he wasn't telling us the truth yesterday. <laughs> Here's a guy who hadn't played in 12 games. He brings him in pretty quickly. Look at the foul situation. Holmgren with two. And Duran with two as well. Duran and Dandridge have combined for eight points. Timmy and Holmgren have combined for just three. Harris, 4-3. It's good. He is their best three-point shooter. Kinyon is probably the most consistent, but that kid can shoot it. Largest lead of the night for Memphis. They can't get the big guys the ball. Well, he got it now. Timmy with Timberlake on him. And Timmy says bye-bye-bye. Look, Timmy has some of the best footwork in the country. I think his ideal move is going to the left shoulder. So not that he can't go the other way. I think he likes going left shoulder a little bit more than right. First field goal for Timmy. Harris through traffic. Oh. He is fouled. Tough take there by Tyler Harris. Mark Few does not agree with the call. Foul called on Timmy, and they're showing it on the 
scoreboard here, and the Gonzaga fans not happy. I knew he was going to get teed, Mark Few. He did? Yep. When you point to the scoreboard, you're going to get teed. Wow. He pointed to the scoreboard on top to the referee. And when you do that, it's an automatic. There it is. As soon as he did that, I said, he's getting one right now. So the mild-mannered Mark Few picks up the technical foul. You know, they changed the rule this year where now you can have electronic stuff on the bench. And they said the one thing that referees will not accept is if a guy on your bench brings the iPad over to you and to show you you made a bad call. It's the same thing there. That is a clear technical foul. Got no choice. Gene Steratore, is that pretty much automatic when they do that? It is, and it is for the optics of it. Listen, if, if Coach Few's upset, you, you know, you expect some verbal when you get near him. You expect him to walk up and down on the sideline, let you know he's dissatisfied. But when you start pointing, when you start gesturing physically, that optic is not good for the game, and the officials have to stop that as soon as it happens in order to maintain that level of integrity throughout. If you start letting the optics go and the gesturing go, you've reached in a place now where this thing feels like it's completely out of control. That's not good for the game. And this is a very intense basketball game. And they've got to keep that intensity within the rules and within the players and not outside of the lines, guys. 100% agree. I mean, you, you just can't do that. You know what a no-no is. There are certain no-nos, and that was a no-no. Agreed, Coach. Meanwhile, Tyler Thanks, Harris Gene. has now made 25 consecutive free throws. And Memphis will see its lead go up to four, and now Harris to the line because of the foul on Timmy. And you don't see, I mean, in all these years of doing the Zag games, I've never seen no. Mark you get a technical foul, ever. For the first time ever, the Stanley Cup playoffs are on TNT and TBS, and you won't want to miss a minute. Watch starting May 5th to see who will raise the cup. Twenty seven consecutive made free throws for Tyler Harris. It date back, dates back to the middle of January. You know, the crazy thing is Memphis has four subs in the game. Four guys that didn't start are in the game now. Bolton for three. That's a big one for the Bulldogs. And again, he went, they went under the screen there, but when Harris tried to get out and contest, he's just too small. Here's Bates, three on the way, and it's good! Amani Bates off the bench for three. He better watch it, too. Now, he better watch it, because he ran by us and said something to the crowd behind us, and if a referee had seen that, he would have got banged there also. I guarantee it. Timeout on the floor, and we'll take a breath. What a game we've got. Memphis and Gonzaga toe-to-toe -to -toe for a spot in the Sweet 16. <laughs> Back in Portland with our tournament summary and Memphis is up 34 to 28. Nemhard leading the way for the Bulldogs with 11. Memphis has scored on eight straight possessions. Now during that timeout referee Vern Harris came over to talk to us. Interesting conversation. Very. I'm glad he came over. The technical foul even though we saw Mark Few point to the scoreboard was 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 for the bench. It was a class A technical foul against the bench. Now, that's why they shot two foul shots. But the technical foul is being assessed, was assessed as a class B to Mark Few. So Mark Few can get three class Bs before he's ejected. So that was a big thing. So if he got another, I thought if he got another technical foul because it was a class A, he'd be out. So that's what Vern Harris cleaned up. But I thought they could have called that technical on Mark Few for sure. Well, that's what's confusing. They saw an assistant point to the scoreboard. We showed you Mark pointing as well but the technical foul went on the assistant and not Mark Few. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm glad Vern came over because we saw Mark Few point. Yeah, we showed so we it. assumed, that, yeah. and I saw him tee him, but it kind of helps Mark Few because now it's a class B on him. Had to reset the shot clock to 30. Coming up, at and at the half. Scores and highlights, latest NCAA tournament news all coming up on at and at the half.
Harris to Williams. Locates Bates in the corner. He's already got one three. Bates looking for another. And Timmy with the one-armed rebound. Bolton going right at Bates. Nemhard for three. And Minot with the big rebound. And again, Memphis doing a good job on the glass. And they're doing a great job in transition on defense. Two and a half to go in the first. And Memphis leads by six. Harris, the lob, and Timberlake missed it. Wow. Ooh, and he knows it, too. He mistimed his jump there. He went up a little too soon, and he mistimed it, and that's why he missed that. You'll see it right here. He just, you know, he tried to gather it a little bit better, and he couldn't do it. And then DeAndre Williams commits the foul, which is a one and one for Gonzaga. Frustration from Timberlake, the transfer from Miami. Sends Anton Watson to the line, the junior from Spokane. Misses the front end. Memphis out rebounding Gonzaga by five, and there's a foul by Bolton. How about the Memphis bench so far in this one, outscoring the Bulldogs 17 to two. Well, how about five points for Timmy and Holmgren between them? I mean, that is, that's incredible. And not getting touches. They're not missing shots. They can't get a touch. Holmgren is on the bench with two fouls. Timmy has been quiet. And for Memphis, Duran has been on the bench with two fouls. They've gotten away with that pretty good, Memphis. It's a good trade. It's because Dandridge has played well. Minot Tough. has played well. Tough. Penny Hardaway plays a lot. It's paying off. Who envisioned greatness today? Tune in to Inside March Madness, presented by Buick, and find out. Hey, what did Penny tell us yesterday? We're not a nine seed. <laughs> he said it. Yeah. He said, yeah, we played early in the year like a nine seed, no question, but we're not playing like one now. He said, we're playing like a two seed right now, and that's what's exciting for our fans. This is the team our fans expected to see throughout the season. You know, you know who said that? Mark Few also said that. <laughs> First thing he said when he met with us, that's not a nine seed. <laughs> Tigers are 13 and 2 in their last 15 games. You definitely knew that was coming. Look at the defense. Watson tied up by Timberlake. And Jonas brings it up ahead. Harris has given the Tigers a nice spark off the bench. They're looking for the high low. Trying to get it into Dandridge. Dandridge sets the screen. Lomax. Better shoot it to Harris. One on the shot clock. Harris puts it up and hits. Tyler Harris gives Memphis a 10 point lead, and Mark Few calls timeout. Oh, these Tigers bringing their A game tonight for a spot in the Sweet 16. How about St. Peter's and that New Mexico State Arkansas game winner of that one takes on the winner of our game here with just over a minute left in the first half three on the way almost went in and the rebound to Dandridge Lomax is fouled inside you know I don't think Gonzaga is used to playing against this level of speed. I mean, this Memphis team is not a regular team. They're very athletic. They have tremendous speed. And it looks like they've gotten their chemistry together. That's where their, their issues in the earlier of the year when they weren't winning wasn't because they weren't good. It's because their chemistry was upside down. Penny told us that. So much hype about the big men in this game. And the guy who's 5'9", 148 pounds, Tyler Harris, has 11 points in 11 minutes. Memphis is plus 17 with Harris on the floor. Oh. 
One more at the line for Alex Lomax. An 11 point Memphis advantage. They've scored the last eight points in this game. You know, it would re really help if they could establish this guy. That's a foul. It'll be two shots for Drew Timmy. I think that's what Mark Hughes really going to talk about at halftime. They have to get control of their half court offense. Memphis has them very frantic right now, so they're not playing their game. They're not running half court offense. They're not doing the things that they normally do. They've got to settle. When they get in the half, they got to run because they like to run. But when they get in the half court, they got to settle down and get back to doing those high lows. Join the mania in the Bleacher Report app. Rep your team, drop your takes, get buzzer beating alerts and more all in one place. Scan the code now to download the Bleacher Report app and never miss a minute of March. You know, Andrew, the first game we had today was methodical. This one is frantic. Don't blink. And frantic favors Memphis. Tell you what, Gonzaga on Thursday was 16 of 30 from the free throw line, 53%. And so far today, they're just two for seven. Time out on the floor. Gonzaga has lost three times this year. In all three of those games, they were trailing at the half, and they'll be trailing at the half here against Memphis with just 37 seconds remaining. And in the losses, Andrew, to Alabama and Duke, they could not stop either team's transition. That was their problem in two of their three losses. St. Mary's was different because they played so slow. They, that wasn't transition. But in the other two losses, Duke and Alabama, they had a lot of trouble stopping transition. And they're having trouble in transition this game. Keep in mind, Gonzaga got off to a very slow start in the first half Thursday against Georgia State and then got red hot in the second half. They're going to have to do that again. You'd never see Gonzaga play zone. Well, they, still, they showed zone, and now they went man-to-man -man after the first pass. So they tried to throw them off a little bit. Shot clock at five. Harris right by Watson. Harris to the hoop. Rolls around and out. Final ten seconds. Nemhard and Dandridge commits the foul with 6.6. Not that, a good foul there. No, that's a bad foul. And that's his second foul. Two shots coming for Andrew Nemhard from Aurora, Ontario. A record 30 Canadian born players in this year's NCAA tournament. And Mark Few certainly likes to go to Canada to pull some to Spokane. Bates comes back in. Get a three point shooter in the game. 39 31 with six seconds left. Lomax over to Minot. Minot connects at the horn. And what a half by Memphis. Transition on a made free throw, Andrew. That's where they're struggling, that transition defense. In the paint, Memphis is outscoring Gonzaga 20 to 10, including this final bucket. Yeah, they couldn't stop the ball. Lomax penetrated it all the way to the basket, and they get a layup at the buzzer. Andy Katz is with Penny Hardaway. Penny, how would you describe the impact that Harris had in that first half? Amazing. He had an amazing impact. He told me he was ready for this game today because he hasn't really been playing well, and he, boy, was he ready. You have 20 minutes to go to beat the number one overall seed and get to the Sweet 16. What must you do in the second half? We have to be us. We have to be Memphis. We have to be disruptive. We have to have our differences. I mean, uh, change our defenses up and keep pushing the ball. Thanks, Penny. Thank you. What a first half it was. Memphis up by 10. After the break, we'll send you to AT&T at the half. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Back in Portland, set for the second half as we take a look at the Buffalo Wild Wings. First half stats, 23 points off the bench for Memphis to just two for Gonzaga. 
As we welcome you back courtside with Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Andy Katz coming up. Drew Timmy, Shed Holmgren combined for six points in the first half. How does that change in the second? Well, they've got to get a hold of this game, especially in the half court. The game was played at a frantic pace the whole half. And what happens is Memphis is used to playing that way. They wanted to play that way because they have all these athletes. They want to run up and down and do all that. Memphis in the half court has to settle down and get establish their big guys in the half court set. And then they got to get back fast on defense because they got hurt transition wise against Alabama. They got hurt against Duke and that's two of their three losses this year. They've got to settle this game down. Andy Katz, what did Mark Few have to say? Well, to add to what Lapis just said, they've got to toughen up, especially offensively. They're going to try Try to get the ball more inside to Drew Timmy with Chet Holmgren. It's hard because this game is so physical and they're going to have to make their free throws. Meanwhile, Drew Timmy in the hallway was telling his team, we got to make our free throws. We've been here before. We got to leave everything on the floor. Just four for nine from the line in the first half. Yeah, they were bad against Georgia State from the free throw line, but it didn't matter because they won big. Lomax jumper too strong. Duran back on the floor. Offensive rebound blocked by Holmgren. Duran gets it back up. And no, and tipped right out to Nolly. He makes the jumper. Offensive rebounds. And you know, if you let a guy catch the ball that deep like Duran, even when he misses, he's already under the basket and travel. Nemhar travels. Second chance points, 10 to 1 in favor of Memphis. And again, we met with Mark Few for a while yesterday. That was concern number one, rebound. We're going to have to fight for him. Those were his words, and they gave up another offensive rebound. It's now 11 for the Tigers. And you know what the craziest stat of the whole game may be, Andrew? That Memphis only has three turnovers. They average 16 a game. They have three tonight. Quinones could not get that one to fall. Timmy spinning on Williams. What Timmy with the left hand. At that time, Gonzaga ran the transition down the other end. Memphis wasn't ready, and a great move by Drew Timmy. Lomax dishes to Williams. Williams goes up with it. Duran could not get a hold of the offensive rebound, and Timmy comes away with it. Two easy shots there for Memphis. This Gonzaga crowd ready to erupt. Trying to spur the Bulldogs on a run. Timmy. Good defense. Timmy's shot is well short. Strother the offensive board. And they'll pull it back out. Yeah, really good defense that time on Drew Timmy. Timmy for three. Good! Just his eighth three of the season. That was definitely not expected by <laughs> Memphis. <laughs> and here come those Gonzaga fans. Lomax and an illegal screen is called. That goes on Duran and that's his third. Yeah, he's got to come out. After the Timmy three, Duran picks up his third, and he is staying out there for yeah. Penny Hardaway. I definitely wouldn't have him still in the game right now, especially with these bigs, because he gets his fourth. He's gone until up to five minutes to go in the game. He's already battling Timmy right now. Gonzaga going right at him. Oh, they should. He better be very careful. Timmy over Duran, gets the bounce. 7-0 run for the Bulldogs, all seven from Timmy. Quickly, Penny Hardaway gets Tyler Harris to the scorer's table. Nolly cannot end the run. Timmy the rebound, and this place is going nuts. All these Gonzaga fans, Bolton for three. Nolly goes up to get it. Duran sets a screen for Lomax. His jumper on the way is good. Big shot for the senior leader, Alex Lomax. Yeah, they just, they've got to keep pace in this game, especially with Gonzaga looking like they have much more bounce in their step. Timmy spins on Williams. You know, the game is fast, but Gonzaga right now is not frantic.
Timmy already has nine in the second half. Williams three, no good. Holmgren had it, lost it. Duran rips it away. And we have a tie up. It's going to go to Memphis. Actually, the possession arrow to Gonzaga. And if they win, they'll see Arkansas in the Sweet 16. Arkansas just defeated New Mexico State. They await the winner between this one. And if you're just joining us, this has been some show between Memphis and Gonzaga, the 1-9 matchup in the West. Yeah, I thought that last shot by Memphis was not a good shot. Now Memphis playing some zone, which I thought they would do at some point. They don't play it much, but I think it's a good move in this game. Turin playing with three fouls, guarding Timmy. Timmy has all of Gonzaga's points here in the second half. Now they switch to man to man. They showed the zone and went man. Shot clock at three. Timmy throws one up. Oh! He's on fire! An 11 2 run, and all 11 from Timmy. Harris for three. Won't go. And the rebound to Strother. He wants to push. What a pace. Strother all the way, and a foul is called. Drew Timmy has come to life in the second half, and a 10 point game is suddenly down to three. Guard Adam in Arkansas waits the winner of this one between Gonzaga and Memphis. Drew Timmy's parents, Megan and Matt, have to be happy right now as Timmy has scored all 11 points for Gonzaga here in the second half. He had four at halftime, and now with four minutes and 26 seconds, he got 15. He had 32 in the first round against Georgia State. And in his NCAA tournament career, he has five 20 point games. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Holmgren had it, lost it right to Durham. Free throws. Killing Gonzaga. Four of 11 after they shot 53% from the line on Thursday. The high low. Dandridge off glass for two. Nice feed from Duran. Let's check in with Andy Katz. I was listening to the last Memphis huddle. Larry Brown imploring them to make stops and take good shots. And Penny Hardy was saying, whenever Timmy has the ball, you got to get right up on him. Yeah, no doubt about it. Strother cleaning up the Holmgren miss. It's a three-point game. Just over five minutes gone by in the second half. Duran will take a long two. That's not the shot that Penny Hardaway wants. He's just looking at Duran down the floor. Oh, he definitely didn't want that. He's going to get a foul now. Good block there by Minot. It stays in bounds. Timmy to Nimhar. Back to Timmy. He thought about another three. And then a foul is called. He's now he's got four. Is that on Duran? It is. Oh, yeah. That's the fourth on Jalen Duran. Well, he's gone for 10 minutes. And that's the risk Penny Hardaway took by keep him, keeping him out there with the three fouls. And I really think between the uh, you know Dandridge and DeAndre Williams, they could have made do. And just you know he's guarding a guy. That's a foul. So Duran has played 15 minutes. He scored four points and has committed four fouls. Oh, Jonas is on home. Yeah, this is a bit of a size advantage. Holmgren bounces it to Timmy, trying to go up with it. Around Dandridge, and a foul is called. And Timmy is feeling it right now. He's got every shot fake there is under there. Penny Hardaway wanted a three-second violation. Instead, Dandridge commits his third. This is where Gonzaga has to improve. We've been talking about it. Their struggles at the free throw line in both tournament games. Now four out of 12. That is incredible. 
Let's check in with Andy Katz. I want to reinforce what I saw in the hallway. Drew Timmy was the first one out of the locker room, gathered the players together just in this back hallway, kept telling him, we've been here before, we can do this, make our free throws, he said. Let's put everything on the floor. Well, Timmy in two tournament games is nine for 19 from the line. One out of two there, it's a two-point game. Memphis was up by 10 at the half. And you know, they've got Dandridge in the game with three fouls now, too. Memphis, if he gets his fourth, then they'll have no big Oh, well, spin the cycle for DeAndre Williams. Quickly the other way go the Bulldogs. I think they better start doubling this guy. Right now it's Williams on him. Harris creeping over. Timmy over Williams. He can't miss. Drew Timmy can't miss right now. You've got to start doubling him. You just have to. This guy's on fire. Plus, it's always, he's doing all his damage on the right side, by the way. Step back by oh, him. What, what, a a shot. what a shot there. Oh, my goodness. 51-47. Bates trips. Strother recovers off the mark. Chet Holmgren for the follow. Harris had the hot hand in the first, drives through traffic, misses the reverse, and Timmy comes away with it. Second half rebounds, 11 to 5 in favor of Gonzaga. Holmgren is bumped by Williams. Fouls are starting to creep up, too, for Memphis. Five here already in the second half, and for Williams, that's his third. Gonzaga yet to commit a foul here in the second half. And there's a look at the foul trouble. Duran sitting with four. Williams and Dandridge, three apiece. And you know, it always hurts your defense when you got two guys in the game with three fouls this early. They don't want a foul, so that may take some of the aggressiveness away from them. Lomax is on Holmgren. Holmgren will take a two, and he ties it at 51. And all the Gonzaga fans on their feet here in Portland. About a five and a half hour drive from Spokane. Quinones out to Lomax. See, they're not worried about closing out on Lomax. He's not a good three point shooter. Holmgren pokes it away from Dandridge. Shot clock down to six. Dandridge right back inside on Holmgren. Dandridge around him for two. What a great move with the left hand. The junior from Memphis puts the Tigers back on top. 29 points for the Memphis bench to just two for Gonzaga. They're just going with that straight man and man, got to get up on that. Nemhart's three won't go in the rebound to Williams. They were lucky, they went under that screen. Lomax wow. connects. And that's where Gonzaga got hurt in the first half. Transition baskets like that where they just weren't 100% ready to get in the stands and stop the ball. You have to stop the ball. Memphis with 30 of their 55 points in the paint as Bolton scores on the other end. They've been running this screen, the screener pick and roll a few times now. Bates has proven he has in the gym range. Seven to shoot. Lomax defended by Bolton. Lomax at the line. Over to Bates. He's got to put one up. He does. And the rebound to Holmgren. Gonzaga doing a much better job on the glass here in the second half. Bolton cuts to the hoop. Puts it up and scores. Tied at 55. I think Penny needs a timeout. I think his guys are tired. I'll be honest with you. Dandridge, look at Dandridge walking up the floor. I'm telling you, he's gassed. They're in the window for a media timeout, but you're right. I don't know if they can wait. Yeah, sometimes you can wait, sometimes you can't. Williams gets position and scores. 
they've been able to take it right at the Gonzaga big men in the lane. The track meet continues. That three won't go for Strother. And then Williams and Holmgren tangled up. And if that's on Williams, that's his fourth. It is. It is. So now Duran and DeAndre Williams with four apiece. Take a breath. We're going to take one. What a show this is. Midway through the second half, Drew Timmy has pulled Gonzaga back to within two. Well, Drew Timmy in the second half has been unbelievable. Just doing everything inside, outside. He even made a three-point shot. He made a couple of 12-footers as he does there. He has brought the Bulldogs back on his very broad shoulders, getting it done in all kinds of different ways. I mean, he showed me some things here that and I've been watching this kid for two years and I've never seen, but we had a big play. That foul on DeAndre Williams was a hook and hold. You see it here. He clamps Holmgren's arm. That is a flagrant one foul. That is a good call. Gene Steratore is with us. Do you agree with that call, Gene? I, yeah, I do agree with Coach Lapp on this for this reason. When Holmgren and Williams are initially hooked up, they both have their each other's arms locked. They're fine. They're happy to be there. When Williams turns away, he has an opportunity to let go of Holmgren's arm. He turns and pulls him down to the ground. That's when this rises to flagrant because that is unnecessary, unwarranted, and a potential injury to Holmgren, and it's a good job by the officials. That's why it was elevated to flagrant one. Nothing else to say. Thank you, Gene. So Gonzaga gets the ball as well because it was a flagrant one. They trail by one. Timmy spins on Dandridge, and Gonzaga has its first lead since it was 22 to 21. And now they've got DeAndre Williams with four. They've got Duran with four. They got Dandridge on the floor with three. Bates launches a three. Air ball is caught by Holmgren. Nemhard wants to push. Bolton transition three is good. Penny needs a timeout because this team is so explosive. He's got to settle this thing back down as best he can. A 10-2 run for Gonzaga. Nolly bounces it to Dandridge. Holmgren all over him. Dandridge cannot get it to go and Holmgren clears. In this half, Gonzaga out-rebounding Memphis by eight. Tough pass there by Nemhard and he turns it over. They got to try and get something to transition now. Amani Bates didn't play for 12 straight games. Played three and a half minutes for the first time since January on Thursday. And now he's out here in a pressure pack situation against Gonzaga as Lomax with a nice move. Little too easy, no help. You better get back. Timmy, yes! I tell you now, Malcolm Danridge, I'm telling you, is gassed. He's walking up and down the court. You see him there right in the middle of the, of the picture. And Penny doesn't have a lot of choices because Duran has four and Williams has four. When you see a guy put his hands on his knees, he's got a problem. Believe me. Lomax from the free throw line. And he gets it to rattle in. I mean, this is a tough pace. There's no doubt about it. You better double him. They brought the double that time. Strother left alone for three. It won't go. And the rebound to Quinones, and he's fouled. I like the double team. You got to do something with Timmy. Can't just let him work down there one, you know, whenever he wants. But you'll see Timmy. Look at Dandridge. I mean, nobody's getting back. You know when you play Gonzaga, they are the fastest playing team in the country. First foul this half against Gonzaga, and Dandridge finally gets to the bench. It took him a while to get there because he's walking so slow. He needed it. Let's go over to Andy Katz. And remember, because of all this foul trouble, you may have to use Imani Bates more, but there's a minutes restriction on him, so you cannot try to exceed that. Remember, Penny told us, 10 to 15 minutes, kind of walking that fine line right now. You know what I wasn't sure about, Andy, and I mean this. I don't know if it was Penny Hardaway's minute restriction or if it was a medical minute restriction. I really, when he said it yesterday, I was going to ask Yeah, he question. wasn't clear on that. No, he was he, he did say 10 to 15. He did, yes, so he So we'll did. see how it plays out. Yeah, it's funny. That, um, it's funny that you brought that up because now it's starting to mean something. You know, we didn't think that much it meant anything, but now it might mean something. Meanwhile, Holmgren just committed his third foul, so he goes to the bench. And another foul on Gonzaga. It'll be two shots 
for the Tigers. And now Memphis has a relatively small team in. No Dandridge, no DeAndre Williams, no, no Duran. They're three best bigs. Three fouls this trip committed by the Bulldogs. Spins out for Nolly. Watch CBS Sports HQ for the best coverage of the big dance. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more on the free 24-7 Sports News Network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Nolly makes one out of two. He said yesterday, I don't think Gonzaga has seen a team like us. Memphis up by 10 at the half, but they're now down by one. Minot did a good job staying in front of Nemhard that time. He's been impressive today yeah. off the bench. Absolutely. By low. And a foul down low. It was Quinones trying to defend Timmy. And that takes us to a timeout. Yeah, as yeah, small as this team is, you got to look for the high low. But right now, the Zags coming on strong, up one on Memphis. Back in Portland with our game summary, that Memphis bench has been super impressive, led by Tyler Harris with 11. But Drew Timmy has come alive here in the second half with 18 of his 22 after halftime. With Steve Lapis, Andy Katz, our producer Jonathan Siegel, director Andy Goldberg, our entire crew. I'm Andrew Catalan. We thank you for joining us. And Lap, we've seen a lot of games this year. Be hard pressed to match a better game than we're looking at right now. No, because you have so many high level athletes on the floor on both teams. And let's face it, the game means so much to every one of these kids. They're given everything they have. Memphis trying to get to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2009. While if Gonzaga wins, it would be their seventh consecutive Sweet 16 appearance. Let's check in with Andy Katz. No surprise, Andrew and Steve, that during that last huddle, Coach Few was diagramming to make sure, and there's no surprise here, they want to keep pushing the ball inside. Continue to push that ball inside, clearly with the foul trouble for Memphis. And I have to stress this, Drew Timmy's voice in that huddle was loud, it was strong, he commands tremendous respect. We saw it in the hallway, we're seeing it on the floor, and we're seeing it in the huddle. Andy, thank you. Steve, when would you go back to Duran and or DeAndre Williams? I would go to one of them at about the six minute mark. I try to get through another minute, 48 seconds, and go with one of them. You can't put them both in, because that will kill your interior defense, because they're not gonna want to foul. And Dandridge is back on the floor after a quick break. Zag has committed four fouls in the last 36 seconds. Lomax trying to go over Bolton. It's short. Lomax gets it back. Offensive rebound number 12 for Memphis. And then you wonder, Jalen Duran's going to have sat out a long time. How's he going to be when he comes back in a game like this? Four on the shot clock. Nolly jumper. And it goes out of bounds, and it was last touched by Bolton. It'll be Memphis basketball. Yeah, Bolton tried as hard as he could to get Dandridge out of there. He just, you know, couldn't do it completely. Dandridge's a big kid. He tried to box him out. And now DeAndre Williams hops off the bench. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad move at all. Penny also has all three timeouts, so he can, he can manage this a little bit over the last seven minutes. I like bringing DeAndre, De, one, bring one of the guys with four back in. And a foul committed by Nemhard. So very quickly, Gonzaga now with five fouls this half. All five in the last minute and 21 seconds, says Mark Few's wife. Not happy with these calls. Mark Few grew up two hours from here in Cresswell, Oregon. As a kid, he said the population was 1,500. So in high school, he had to do everything, play every sport, even had to be in the band. He said he played the trombone. Happy to be back in his home state. He grew up a big Blazers fan. Harris's three won't go, and tip to Holmgren, who's back out there with three fouls. You better find him straight away three. 
He's been really struggling from deep of late. And now the other way, Harris jets up ahead and ties it at 64. How fast did they get that thing up the floor? And here's Gonzaga going right back at him. Good job by Memphis to get back. Harris has 13 points in 17 minutes. Timmy over Dandridge. He's unbelievable right now. And, and that was not horrendous defense. They made him shoot like an eight-foot fadeaway hook shot. Working on another 30-point game. He's got 25. Lomax has been great tonight on that bum left ankle. Now Williams attacks. Timmy right there. Williams goes up, and he scores! I don't know how he made that. He lost the ball almost twice. He came so close to a travel, too. Timmy flies in. Not this time, and Williams off the glass. Hey, you gotta push it if you're Memphis, because that's where your comfort is. Like, right there. Spins out, and Timmy has it. Does not have numbers, so he'll slow it up. Memphis has not scored on his last five trips. Well, Homer is by himself. Not anymore. The ball's in the bucket. <laughs> I'm looking at it from here. I'm saying Homer's under the basket by himself. Nine points for Holmgren. And Duran coming back in. Duran at the scorer's table as we hit five minutes to play in what's been an unbelievable game for a spot in the Sweet 16. The switch now. Harris has Timmy on him. Harris with five. Harris rejected by Holmgren. Harris is 5'9". Holmgren is seven feet. Holmgren won that one. You can switch Timmy if you want because you got him behind. Nemhard all alone for three. I need a timeout. Not calling it. He's got three timeouts. Penny wants to play on. This is a huge possession. You're down five. You can't let it get to be seven or eight. Offensive foul on Nolly. Needed the timeout. Good job here by Nemhart. Yeah, that's charge. He gave him the shoulder. Nemhart has 16 points, four three pointers, and five assists tonight. And now Duran is back out there. He's got the four fouls along with Williams. And I know the floor. I know where this ball's going. They're looking for the high low for Timmy. He's got a, he had a lot of room there because DeAndre Williams was fronting him really high. Inside four minutes to go. Oh, that was almost a foul. Timmy. Nemhard deep three. And a foul is called on Nolly. He had his hand on the back of Holmgren, and that takes us to a timeout. It'll be a one and one when we come back. Nolly picks up his fourth. What a ball game. Gonzaga down by 10 at the half, but they lead by five with a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. The second round continues tomorrow at noon Eastern on CBS with Houston and Illinois. At 5 Eastern, TNT has the NCAA Nissan tip-off show. Eight games across CBS, TNT, TBS, and True TV over 12 hours. Winner of this one will see Arkansas in the Sweet 16. Foul trouble, major issue for Memphis. Duran, Nolly, and Williams with four apiece. Keep in mind the Tigers have three timeouts, as do the Zags. Yeah, the foul situation definitely hurt Memphis big time in this game. Gonzaga is 7 for 17 at the free throw line tonight. And they miss the front end of the one and one. That is unbelievable. They shot 53% from the line against Georgia State on Thursday. Kenyonis bounces it to Duran. Down low, Duran is fouled. He's got to finish that one. That was a good pass. That was a 
Kinona's making that pass there. Oh, he's got to finish that. That was the fourth foul on Holmgren now. So 327 to go. You let it ride? Yo, I let it ride now, yes. Absolutely. Holmgren, Duran, Williams, all with four. Duran makes the first free throw. Four freshmen in the country have scored 300 points, 200 rebounds, and 60 blocks this year. Duran and Holmgren are two of the four. Johnny Broom, Duran Holmes, the others. Duran one out of two. Four point game. Well, they got to get a stop now, and they're in their blue pressure on the missed foul shot. You got to think this is balls going inside to Drew Timmy. Timmy and Nemhard have played the entire second half. Bolton drives, scoop shots, good. Good offense there. No help on the drive. Scores way too easy. Lomax over to Quinones. He's been quiet tonight. Quinones step back jumper. Big shot when they needed one. Lester Quinones. Some pressure in the backcourt. Nemhard able to locate Bolton. And one thing about Gonzaga, they have to continue to attack. They're at their best when they are attacking. Under two and a half to play. Gonzaga, the number one overall seed for the second straight year. Nemhard, a three! Harris got spun around on the screen, went under it. He's small as it is. You can't go under that screen on these guys. They shoot the ball too well. Fifth three for Nemhard. Two minutes to go. They feed Duran. Great matchup here. Duran and Holmgren. Holmgren to the floor. And the jam by Duran and a flop warning against Holmgren. There's yeah. the flop warning. That was a flop. There's the finish. And it's back to a five point game. They've been much better in the half court. Gonzaga. First field goal of the half for Duran. Holmgren goes to the hoop. Duran's right there. Yeah, he wasn't really sure what he wanted to do. Timmy came and bailed him out. Nemhard drives. Nemhard in the paint. Over to Timmy. Short. Timmy had a wide open look. The easy shot he's missed in the second half. You gotta go to the big guy down low. Williams inside, trying to maneuver around Timmy. Back out to Lomax. He'll set it up. Duran calling for it. Holmgren got a hand on it. Still a loose ball. Williams up and in. One possession game. They've been at, they've been good with the high pick and roll in this game. And everyone's on their feet here in Portland, Oregon. What a game. Oh, they go to the high low. Holmgren right at Duran. Duran seals him off. Tough pass and a foul. Harris had his hands around Bolton. Yeah, Bolton was posting up Harris there. They were looking to get him the ball on the box. It'll be two shots for Rajir Bolton. That was team foul number 10 on the Tigers. And Gonzaga gets one to rattle down. Nabil Kareem, Seth Davis, Rex Chapman, Bob Huggins, and Candace Parker have all the highlights and analysis on Inside March Madness presented by Buick. That's later tonight only on TBS. Big free throws for Bolton. 78-73, and a timeout called by Mark Few. Gonzaga's lead is up to five here in Portland. We are back with a look at the West region. The winner of this one will see Arkansas in the Sweet 16 on Thursday in San Francisco. How about Rajir Bolton? 17 points, 11 this half, and that was only the second time that a Zag has made two free throws in a trip to the line. Drew Timmy is getting a rest right now. 
Break it down for me if you're Memphis. But right now, you got to attack the basket. Chances are Gonzaga, Mark Futoli's guys, don't foul. Get a quick deuce here if you can. You're down five. You don't need a three. You just need a basket. Quinones will launch a three. It's wow. good! You got a foul. You got a foul. Only a two-second two difference. Only a two-second differential. You must foul. Maybe you have enough time for a trap. You can get a couple of traps if you want. Watson trying to get it to now you got a foul. Does. And there's the foul by Quinones. That was well done by Memphis because it looked Gonzaga looked a little shaky in the backcourt there. Maybe could have gotten uh, a steal. You had enough time to at least try that. You are a team that turns people over, so you had to give that a shot. They did lose 10 seconds, but not the worst thing in the world. They did foul Nemhard though. 87% free throw shooter. Yeah, they, once they crossed half court, they had no choice. They couldn't wait for the ball to go to someone else. That was Looks some like shot Quinones made, by the way. Big time. As Penny Hardaway calls a timeout, he now has two remaining with 22 seconds on the clock. Gonzaga up by three. Gonzaga, the number one overall seed, has a three-point lead against Memphis. Early in the second half, the Tigers led by 12. The Bulldogs have come all the way back. It was a timeout by Memphis and one more free throw to come. Well, if he makes this and they're down four, then obviously it's a two-possession game. Get a quick two. I think you can get a quick two because Mark Hughes guys don't want to foul. If they're down three, even there you have time for a quick two. Now, obviously, if you get a good three from your good shooters, Tyler Harris, Quinones, that's a different story. But you don't have to take the three. Now, if it gets under seven, then you got to start looking for the three if you're down three. But then Gonzaga may think about fouling. Sure. So let's see what happens with this free throw first. Andrew Nemhard, first two years at Florida, and then transferring to Gonzaga. Makes them both. Four-point game. I like a quick two here. Quick two. Lomax brings it across. And then timeout to Williams. Quinones is looking for three. Step back three. Why? One go. Rebound underneath Williams. And Williams over to Nolly. He's fouled by Holmgren. Holmgren is fouled out of the game, and it'll be two shots. I don't understand that. You're down four. It's two possessions. So why take a bad three? Like that, like that, they were clearly looking for a three-point shot there. But you don't have to look for a three-point shot where it's, you're willing to take a bad shot like it's the end of the game and you're down three. I don't get that at all. Holmgren gets a big hand as he fouls out with nine points, nine rebounds, and four blocks. And Timmy comes back on the floor. That was not handled properly at all. They should have gone for the two. Yeah, if you get a good three, that's a different story. But the force of three, you didn't need it that bad. You're down two possessions. Saw that earlier today with Creighton in Kansas. Yeah. They threw up a three when it was a two possession. When game. it wasn't necessary. Nolly makes the first. Now he makes two. Obviously, they have to foul immediately. Penny Hardaway communicating with Larry Brown on the bench, his 81-year-old assistant coach. If he misses and you get the rebound, you got to kick it out to a three-point shooter. Nolly makes it. Two-point game. Penny Hardaway calls timeout with 6.1 on the clock. A spot in the Sweet 16 awaits for the winner of this one. Memphis has one timeout remaining. Gonzaga with two. Free throws were an issue for the Bulldogs on Thursday against Georgia State, just 53%, and tonight they are 50% from the line. Well, they got to set up the pressure. Uh, interesting, they're setting this line up on the baseline, everybody. You got to try and get a five second count looks or like, steal. Looks or, like they're starting a race. Or foul, yeah. People are doing that a lot. We got to foul them. Them hard. And there's the foul with 4.1 to go. And again, he's an 87% free throw shooter. Yeah, you needed to try and keep it out of his hands, of all people. 
his second person. Nimhard is four out of five at the line tonight. If he misses one. And some confusion on the clock on the clock and our officiating crew is going to go to the monitor here. Terry Weimer Vern Harris Kelly Pfeiffer. Clock should start right there. It did look like it started on time. I think five. Yeah. And they put 4.4 .4 on the clock. They added three tenths. And the foul occurred 4.4 seconds. 4.4. Nemhart at the line for two. Well, obviously, if he makes both, this thing's over. If he misses one, They've got time to get a shot, but they're going to have to get a couple of guys down the other end. They're going to have to. They can get it in bounds here, and then they got to fling it up to the corners and hope somebody gets off a three. Memphis does have one timeout as well. Yeah, I don't think this is a good situation for a timeout, in my opinion. First one for Andrew Nemhard. Twenty two points for Andrew Nemhard tonight. This isn't really their best three point shooting team. I would think Tyler Harris would be in. Uh, Makes them both. Timeout Gonzaga. In the last 41 seconds Gonzaga is six for six at the line. So struggled throughout the first two tournament games but down the stretch they've made them when they needed him. Well, this also is a very experienced team, and Andrew Nemhart is their most experienced guard. So, uh, and he's a great free throw shooter. He bailed them out there. Now they just can let the ball come in bounds and go foul. Gonzaga is the only team to reach each of the last six Sweet 16s, trying to make it seven in a row. And then move on to San Francisco for a date with Arkansas on Thursday. It'll be Lomax to inbound for Memphis. Lomax to midcourt to Nolly. Nolly over to Quinones. Nobody near him. Quinones misses, and Gonzaga is going back to the Sweet 16. <laughs> Memphis led by 12 early in the second half, and Gonzaga, thanks to Drew Timmy, got red hot, and they win it by four. If Memphis played like this all year, they wouldn't have been the ninth seed in this tournament, let me tell you that. But you got to give them a lot of credit. They played like the experienced team they were. They came out, they made the adjustments at halftime. They got Drew Timmy involved in this game. He's the guy that brought them back. Other guys brought it home, but he's the guy that brought them back. 21 of his 25 points coming after halftime. This is on the heels of a 32-point game in the first round. Seventh straight. Sweet 16 for Gonzaga. Well, you tip your cap to Memphis. Such an up and down season. They started 5 0, oh, then they went 4 and 8. Amani Bates got hurt. There was friction that Penny called out. Then they went on a 13 out of 15 stretch that landed them in the second round of the NCAA tournament only to come up short against Gonzaga. We update the bracket. It'll be Gonzaga and Arkansas on Thursday in San Francisco.
Andrew Nemhard, 23 points. Big free throws down the stretch. He also had five assists. And Gonzaga got all they could handle from Memphis. Bulldogs go to 28 and 3 overall. And you heard Andy Katz all night saying that Drew Timmy was the voice at halftime that really fired up the Bulldogs. And there he is right in the middle of the team huddle doing it again. Well, he played like a leader. I mean, he's the leader of this team. And let me tell you something, he wasn't all talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? He came out and he did it. And he is with Andy Katz. All right, Drew. I heard you in the hallway motivate this team. What did you say in that locker room? I said I don't give a flying F what happens what happens at the end of the game whether we lose or win we're not going out as no uh, soft guys leave it all on the floor because it could be your last 20 and hey man if you go all out and we still lose live with, play with no regrets and uh, we took that to heart and uh, you know we came out with the win fortunately but give credit to Memphis man they they really brought it and the way they turned their season around is pretty remarkable. Andrew. Free throw shooting had been a problem prior to the end of the game when you made the free throws that mattered most. With all the pressure that is on your guys' shoulders, how did you block all that out? Man, I just I just looked at all the work I put into doing this stuff, and, and I just had to trust in myself and have confidence in myself. My teammates already know they have so much confidence in me, and that's why I knocked down those shots. Drew, this has been arguably the toughest second-round match you guys have had in the last five years. How did you guys reset outside of that motivational tactic, but offensively in terms of getting the ball to you in that second half? Uh, they did a good job in the first half, playing physical, bringing a double early, and uh, coach was like, we need you, and you've got to get it no matter what. So that's kind of just the mindset we played with. And I mean, this guy right here, man, iced the, iced the freaking game, controlled the game. They pressed, they got up in him. He didn't let it phase him. They were talking crap on him, and you know what? That's what we expect from him, man. He, he brought us home. He got us this shit, man. Good shit, boy. What do you think of that kind of compliment? Man, I love this guy, man. We, we, I love this guy, man. We just, we just, we just trying to keep, keep winning games, man. I love this guy. Congratulations. On to San Francisco. Yep. Great stuff right there. Drew Timmy, what a character. As Gonzaga wins at 82 to 78. That'll do it from Portland for Steve Lapis, Sandy Katz, Gene Sterator, our entire crew. I'm Andrew Catalan saying so long from Oregon. Coming up on TBS right after the break, it's Inside March Madness presented by Buick. Gonzaga to the Sweet 16 for the seventh consecutive year.